House has overridden the governor's veto and the bill becomes law, notwithstanding the governor's objections. So be notified. That was a moment last night when North Carolina's Republican supermajority overrode the Democratic governor's veto and instituted a 12-week abortion ban, all abortions after 12 weeks, after that first trimester. Starting in July, people in North Carolina will not have access to that abortion care. And despite the fact this is a devastating blow to abortion access both in the state and across the South, Republicans are trying to brand this as a compromise. There were certainly a lot on, on you know, my side of the aisle who felt like a six-week bill, like it's being debated in South Carolina and other states, would be more appropriate. And then, of course, there's some that wanted more weeks than 12. And so the compromise came down to 12 weeks. There are so many extra um, restrictions packed onto this bill that make it really hard to get care before 12 weeks. So I would really push back strongly against that narrative that this is any sort of compromise approach. I mean... Let's not talk about compromise. They rolled back a right women had had in this country for 50 years. That's the starting point, okay? And banning abortion at 12 weeks isn't even popular in the state. A recent poll showed that 57% of North Carolina voters, 57% either support the state's current 20-week ban or would expand it, meaning further out than 20 weeks. Only 35%, just over a third of voters, wanted to restrict access to 15 weeks or less, and they went lower than that. And here's the thing. North Carolina is not a dyed-in-the-wool red Republican state. It's basically a 50-50 state. They have a Democratic governor, Roy Cooper. They have a Democratic secretary of state and attorney general. Donald Trump won the state in 2020 narrowly. Look at that. Less than 50% of the vote. It's a pretty evenly state, split state. And yet, and yet, and yet, through aggressive gerrymandering, Republicans have been able to secure a majority in both houses of the legislature, even as they lost the governor's mansion twice in a row, but even that gerrymandering couldn't get them the supermajority that they would need to do things like institute a veto-proof abortion ban. What allowed them to do that is one person, State Representative Trisha Cotham. Last year, Cotham ran to represent the 112th district as a Democrat. She pledged during her campaign to oppose further restrictions on abortion. She was backed by Emily's List, which works to support women candidates who are pro-abortion rights. And she won that seat with 59% of the vote. And then when she got to the legislature, she fulfilled her campaign promise by signing on as a co-sponsor to a bill that would codify Roe v. Wade's abortion protections in the state of North Carolina. In fact, on the state house's website to this day, she is still listed on the bill as a co-sponsor. But in April, just five months after she was elected as a Democrat who wanted to secure abortion rights, out of the blue, Trisha Cotham switched parties. And that switch of parties, it was that decision and her vote that then turned the Republican majority in North Carolina into a supermajority. Here's her incredibly roundabout non-explanation for why she took such a catastrophically consequential step to become a Republican. I have decided to change my party affiliation, joining the Republican Party, and have been welcomed with open arms by my colleagues. This now where we are, modern day Democratic Party, has become unrecognizable to me and to so many others throughout this state and this country. The party wants to villainize anyone who has free thought, free judgment, has solutions, who wants to get to work to better our state. Did someone roast you really bad on Twitter and then you changed your party? Is that what happened? I mean, State Representative Cotham never addressed why she changed, forget everything about the Democratic Party. Let's say she's right about that. Why did she change her position on abortion? Fine, you're a Republican now. Why did you change your abortion position so radically? Like, what changed in five months from a Democrat who has spoken movingly about her own abortion and reproductive rights, who supports codifying Roe v. Wade, who's a co-sponsor on legislation listed on the state website to this day to a Republican who voted to override a congressional uh, gubernatorial veto 
for a 12-week abortion ban that only a third of voters want. What happened? We got nothing. She owes that explanation to the people of her state, to the voters in the 112th district, who sent a Democrat who wanted to protect Roe and abortion to the state house, a woman who just put a 12-week abortion ban on the books.